What's up, everybody? We are going to be doing a podcast. <laughs> it's been a long while. I am Whoa. sorry for that. Kyle, we you were you were in on the last one. Which one was it? I don't know. I think I was. Anyway, we said, we're back. Well, kind of, for one. And then we took another hiatus over the summer. But <laughs> that's all right. Um, that's pretty awesome. You know, we get pretty much all through the summer and the fall, we kept hearing winter podcasts coming back. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really honestly didn't know what I, I was doing with this whole board over here. So uh, now I got someone who does. Uh, so um, I guess I just a, just a quick deal before we start rolling into uh, some fun new content for the 2022 season. Um, I got Kyle Pulsifer on my right. I got Ryan McConnell on my left. Um, I got Blake behind the camera there. Blake, good to have you this season uh, here at BBA. And um, guys... Here it's, here, it's here already. We're we're ready to roll again. Um, Kyle, you literally came back uh, into the shit show <laughs> we call BBA of <laughs> trying to do way too much stuff um, in in a day and in a, in a season. But awesome to have you back. How was your summer? Busy. Uh, yeah, you went I from one just... one busy crap show to another, didn't <laughs> yeah. you? I um. Yeah, it went by extremely fast. It I, did, didn't it? Yeah, I had a lot of plans, but I didn't really get them done. We were going to go dirt biking. A in, lot. I dirt, I rode my dirt bike for the last time in June when I rode with you. I, w- I wasn't much better, to be honest. <laughs> um, I I myself had a, a an awesome summer uh, from a standpoint of being able to catch up with the family. I had some pretty big intentions of dirt biking a lot, um, and instead... We traveled a bunch in the RV. I spent a, a ton of time with uh, with my wife and the kids, and and really had an awesome summer. And so that that was fun. Um, it made it kind of hard to get back into the groove of this tor- <laughs> this torrid pace uh, because that's what it is right now. But it's um, it, it's it's an exciting time for us as snowmobilers in this industry. We have some incredible machines from all the manufacturers and we have an industry that is so freaking fired up, um, that I've never seen it like this and never been a part of something like this. So I'm excited. Uh, Ryan, how, how was your summer? Awesome summer. Had a lot of fun traveling with the family. We did Hawaii. We did a huge Utah trip, a bunch of family visits, try to get out as much as possible. And like you guys said, where the heck did it go? We got into dirt biking too, just only made it out a couple of times, but we get a ride around at home now because we moved. So cool. moving was a huge, huge deal. I feel like we're still not settled. So, But that's been awesome and a good change of pace for us in life. And, and then uh, here we are. Yeah. And, you know, if people think that winter is like three months. Um, our, our winter is about, it feels like about eight months. Um, True. You know, I get the question and, you know, we, I put it up on, on social just tonight, like, Podcasts are back. We're going. What do you guys want to hear? Um, besides a couple of the smart ass answers, <laughs> um, the just a ton of excitement, which is which is really cool. Um, you know, so I think we'll just kind of start diving in. Um, obviously, tons of topics to talk about in the snowmobile world. Um, tons right? of excitement, like you said. Like I've never seen it like this before. Yeah. And so, you know, I guess, you know, when you think of the word excitement, <clears throat> it's really hard not to think about the new sleds, right? I mean, obviously, um, you know, players launching the Matrix chassis, us getting um, a chance to ride some of the pre-production ones quite a bit last year. As I've mentioned, you know, I've, I've got to be riding the the boost sled for a couple years now. Um, and then, you know, I got to literally ride the first one, one of the first ones off the production line just last week. Um, and you know, a lot of people kind of took that, um, out of context. They're like, so wait a minute, you're still testing the, the, hmm. the stock sleds. <laughs> no, um, uh, it was, it was, um, it was awesome to be able to just literally, you know, I've been riding the sled in such an early stage for so long to, to, to ride the actual one with all the actual parts. I mean, I'm no different than the guy who gets the one right after the one I just rode, right? I'm still excited to see all of that stuff and and to see it and know that it was, um, you know, as good and actually, you know, to be honest, a little better, more refined um, 
uh, to know that, you know, we literally get to go ride, you know, this snowmobile. So um, one of the questions that some, uh, uh, quite a few people were asking was, you know, what is, what is the difference? I've been riding, you know, boost or turboed sleds for a long time. And now the factories are coming out with these, these factory boost sleds. You know, what has been your experience with what's the difference between the Polaris factory boost sled and, you know, let's just say an aftermarket, you know, boondocker kit, or there's a bunch of, uh, of other companies out there making kits. So I thought that would be a fun one to kind of dive in, um, to, uh, tonight. And, I say tonight because, you know, it's 7 o'clock. We've been working since 6 this morning, and uh, now we just thought it would be a, f a fun idea to, to bust a, a podcast out. But um, so let's – so let, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set both of you guys up, and I think it's, it's been – this has been fun to watch. You know, Ryan, you love um, – you love stock sleds. I do. You know, um, you've built, we've built some pretty fun stock sleds. Mm -hmm. uh, and 900 is stock. Uh, 900 <laughs> is stock, should be stock, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and you rode a 900 last year, the year before you rode, ran a twin sled. And then always staged kits. Yep, but yeah. you've spent some time on one of your favorite sleds of all time, Ron Burgundy. Uh, True, which and was that a, was turbo. Which was a turbo sled, and so. It's funny you say that, just. Brings chills to me. <laughs> that sled is so gnarly. Yeah. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna yeah. ask you a couple things, and then yeah. Kyle, you know, your experience with turbo sleds has been relatively well. I mean, to be honest, you're kind of a new mountain rider. Yeah. I mean, you know, you that that first you you're, you came out here as a as a client, you were running what what silver turbo a silver a, a silver yeah, um and you know that you hadn't been mountain riding a ton prior to that right mm -hmm. um and then you know since then you've built some some sl some boondocker sleds uh, you know had some vogue stuff your sled last year ran really good um you took I, yeah yeah your black sled and you took it up jackson and so you know i think you're a really good gauge um to talk about and then you know obviously i've been riding turbo sleds since 2007 um so we're gonna that's what we're gonna do for this podcast we're gonna talk about um you know a lot of excitement which is factory boost sleds it's something that you guys a lot of people have wanted uh for many many years and when's it gonna be stock well guess what it is stock now and so we'll kind of dive into that so i'm gonna start it by giving you guys my two cents here um and you know i have again i've ridden some snowmobiles that have from 2007 all the way to current or literally a, a a turboed sled every single year and um, I have built sleds with more power than the factory boost sleds. I've had sleds with less power, uh, a turbo sleds with less power than the factory boost. And my 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 take over all of it is because I could literally talk about the whole thing by myself, and then my buddies here wouldn't even get to talk. But the way the sled runs from a runnability standpoint. That is something that is what we've all been wanting um, for in the aftermarket world is we want it to run like a stock sled but have turbo horsepower. <laughs> I mean, that's a simple ask, right? We want it to run perfect all the time, never screw up, and have lots of power. Well, it's a simple ask but an incredibly tough task. And I think that is where you gain the advantage of the resources of an OEM to be able to capitalize on that exact um, ask. And so, you know, that is my first reaction to um, to the boost sled is, yeah, I've ridden, I've had sleds that are, are more powerful than it, but you know, to be honest, especially as I get older as a rider, you know, trying to go hold on to a 12 pound freaking monster all day is a lot of work. And I like to not work as much as I'm, as I'm riding now. And, and so, you know, I think Polaris has done a really good job with, to be honest, it's kind of at the limit for, it's still a really rideable. It's still really rideable, it's but real. it's dude, it's, it's rowdy. <laughs> it's rowdy, right? Yeah. It's a handful, Kyle, and and we'll we'll talk about that and get into that. But you know, it's the it's the perfect amount of power for myself to like 
go get the line done. It's not like if I failed on a line, it's not because I wish I had more boost. <laughs> it's because I screwed up, mm-hmm. you know? And and I will say, like, boost can can make up for mistakes, but it can also severely put you into mm-hmm. more mistakes. And that's normally what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've always told people. It can get you out of trouble, but it can sure as heck get you into well, big ha- trouble. Well, how many how many times, guys, have we seen, you know, we used to rent <laughs> turbos here at BBA. Yeah, when I was a client. That was what you put yep, me on. Yep. And, you know, it ended up just being like, oh, my gosh, dang, these guys are, like, getting their butts kicked. And I guarantee they would be doing better on a stock mm-hmm. sled. And so we've seen that a lot. And, you know, I think that's going to be a learning curve from all of the guys who ordered boost sleds <laughs> this year. I mean, I think it's going to be, you know, it's an eye-opening experience, you know, to, to ride a sled that, that has that type of power and takes, you know, more finesse and all of that stuff to, to ride and be smooth. So kind of circling back, you know, again, my overview, I think from, you know, the bottom end response, the runnability, factory turbo, warranty, like gas and go, like, like all of those things, you know, I would trade all of the high horsepower race gas intercool, like all of that stuff I would trade for, you know, the package that we literally can go get at the dealership. And, um, yeah, you know, are, are we, are we going to do stuff? Probably. Yep. Am I going to like make it cooler and lighter and faster? Well, yeah. And that's just because it's not because it sucks. It's because that's what I do. It's what I've done since I was freaking two years old. And it's like, so quit giving me shit about that. You know, actually, no, keep giving me shit. It keeps me fired up. It keep, makes me want to do it even more. So I like that. You know, I, everyone called me out. Well, it's not even a Polaris by the time you're done. Well, no, it's still a Polaris and I'd still go kick your ass on a stock sled, but I'm going to really kick your ass on this sled because I like doing it. Um, and actually you guys know me well enough. I don't think that, that I, you know, I'm, I'm humble about this sport, humble about our sleds, but you know, I feel they, they fit my riding style to the best. So Kyle, I'm going to bring you in, um, you know, talk about some of the things that you liked and felt with your aftermarket stuff. And then, you know, bring that around, you know, full circle with, you know, the boost sleds that you got to run last year. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing with my aftermarket stuff is I've had, it seemed I've had some like days that I wouldn't trade it for nothing. And then there was days where I would have preferred a stock sled, whether it be like a snow condition where you really needed bottom end. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of sacrificed with almost all aftermarket kits that I rode. Um, Another thing is kind of the, there's a lot more stuff you got to pay attention to just by the way stuff is routed. I mean, you have, uh, you have stuff in under the hood that doesn't belong there. Yep. Um, There's not the fit and finish of what the factory can do with, coolant lines and oil lines and oil pumps and inner or like the inner coolers like the <laughs> how easy it is to poke a rock through an inner cooler on the bottom of the sled um but last year i probably built one of my most favorite turbo sleds um i took a stock sled <laughs> a week before jackson and put together a older boondocker sidekick turbo mm-hmm. and volk tuned it for me and got it set up and that sled was fast it was really fast. That was a fast snowmobile. And, I mean, that's that doesn't bring into factor that I'm also spending $70 a day to ride it on just fuel. So And what fuel were you running in that sled? Straight av gas. Yep. Yep. So, and that, that sled ripped. I was super happy with that sled. Um, so, hold on. You, you said it was fast, like super fast. That sled was fast. Like, uh, okay. So, it's fast. You're running straight 100 octane. Things a rocket. Mm-hmm. Put it up towards uh, a boost sled. What... How, how do you compare it? I the, I would compare it almost, I mean, they're really, really close. But the runnability of the stock sled, it's quiet. It has way better rippier bottom end. Uh, I mean, I'd put them right on the same level. It's in, And it's interesting because I, I already knew the answer to that, mm-hmm. right? And if you would have said something different, I would have called you a liar. <laughs> because I rode your sled and you, hearing how excited you were to have like that sled never let you down, took mm-hmm. you up some insanely gnarly stuff, mm-hmm. and you loved it. And yep. then I said, yeah, but what about this stock sled that runs pump fuel and has a warranty? What did you <laughs> think about that? Oh, yeah. it's about the same. Yeah, it's literally the same sled. <laughs> And that, but I mean, like I kind of went through a period where I was in love with turbos. I went through a few years probably where I really kind of hated them. Yeah. Didn't, there was a year you didn't build one. 
Yeah, I mean, I rode a stock snowmobile, and I a stock. I mean, they both kind of complement each other. Mm -hmm. As far as I mean, there's nothing more on a. I mean, a turbo, your timing has to be so perfect, and I mean, your speed, um, like. I don't know, maintain, or like maintaining the proper speed and doing the right things. Like you got to be earlier at times. You can be later at times though too. I, the, the turbo is like, it's a, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to ride with just how much power we have. Yeah. Well, and I think, um, you know, there's two factors for me is in the right snow conditions, a, a, a turbo is as much fun as you can have with your clothes on. Like yeah. <laughs> bar none. Like totally agree. Bar none. And it's the snow can make it feel light and fun and wheelie everywhere and mm -hmm. do lines that you would never, ever, ever be able to do with a 900, a stock 850, like yeah. ever. Nothing can replace it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and those days are like a lot of people, that's the days they ride. And, and, you know, I always get the question like, you know, what, should I get a boost or an 850 or a stalker or 900, right? I'm like, well, hold on. Don't, don't ask me because I ride a lot. And, you know, if I could only ride one sled, it would be, you know, a, a stock based sled that's lightened up. If I can only ride one, cause I ride a lot of days. Now, if I rode glory snow every single time and I chased snow and I was, you know, going to be riding good stuff, I would go kick everybody's butt on a, on a boost sled 165 with some lightweight goodies and just go have a ball. That mm -hmm. would be my one sled. Right. Yep. But so that's my point is it is. And to your point, Kyle, there was years like <laughs> You're a freaking idiot. For the first year you guided here, your one and only sled was a turbo. Well, <laughs> for I have an Let's excuse. I I owned that snowmobile for like eight days before I like yeah. mangled it. Uh huh. So and then I still had my really pretty sled sitting over there, and I was like, well, I mean, I just as well make it through the seat, put some, weld some shit on this one, and see if I can make it through the season on it, and then I'll still have a really pretty snowmobile. Oh, dude, at the end of the year, I was, a mess. I was like, um, excuse me, the clients are pulling you out again, <laughs> Kyle. Can you please get it together? And, and you know, we joke about that, but and that's my point about the conditions, right? Mm -hmm. End of our season, the snow's heavy. Like, you don't need a like a turbo sled, to, yeah. you know, for, for running those conditions. It's nice to literally get on a stock sled and just buzz around and cruise around and you can do everything you want. But so, so kind of to go back again on on your view you know i and i love it and that's why i wanted to kind of talk about this for our first one is you know your love hate relationship with turbos and mm -hmm. and you know i i'll be honest i'd be shocked if you if you told me that you weren't pretty excited about this year to go oh man that stuff. first ride i got to ride on the matrix with the boost at <laughs> down south there in yeah. january it didn't take five minutes. We were with the Polaris engineering team. And I mean, I, you, yeah, I probably got a little excited. No, you didn't get a little excited. Just I about, was screaming just at about you. total three Stop. snowmobiles that didn't exist. <laughs> Stop, Kyle. <laughs> Calm down. You had the boost thumb and you were happy. I uh, had it to the bar. I had to give it a good test. You, you did. Uh, and I, you know, like I went into it. I don't even know where my expectations are. I don't know if I really set expectations but it definitely like blew my expectations away yeah like i figured it being a stock turbo and riding a different stock turbo before i was hoping it wasn't that it was actually going to build some power it built some freaking it built power, some huh? power i mean it and builds some track speed i mean and that that's as simple as it gets that's something that we can look at and i mean it straight up builds track speed yeah and i think it's interesting and you know i i I keep threatening to do a post about this um, just to, uh, and it's not to ruffle feathers. It's just reality. You know, I've been watching um, some GoPro stuff of some of the skidoo riders riding their, their factory turbo sled. And, you know, I'm seeing that 40 to 43 mile an hour track speed. Um, and, you know, that's pretty consistent with where we are at with our 900s, where on our boost sleds, you know, we're around that 52 to 54 uh, mile an hour track speed. And 
I, you know, track speed is king when it comes to, you know, getting on top of the snow and, you know, pulling lines and, and all of that stuff. And so, and, and, you know, I, you guys heard me on some previous podcasts talk about the, the factory skidoo turbo. I'm not hating on it. It is an incredibly fun and responsive package. They did a, a tremendous job on it. In my opinion, it just, it, it doesn't have the power that, the players boost sled does and you will see that this year obviously and you don't have to, i mean just sure yeah brand's paid to say it. of course he's going to say that whatever you'll see for yourself i mean that's uh, the the sled will show you that that is a true statement and you know we've ridden them enough like when we get on we're like man they you know the the skidoo feels nice and fun but you know it just kind of peters out on top and again you ride our elevation the, um the Polaris, and we talked about this last year in a podcast, the Polaris keeps building boost and the Skidoo doesn't. And, you know, maybe that's something they address in the future. So all the, I mean, all the technology too with the, I mean, just the way it works. I mean, it is, I mean, they didn't cut any corners or skip any ideas. I mean, they went through that thing. Yeah, uh, they they did. And, you know, what's what's scary is, you know, so it's just, going to always get better you mm-hmm. know no matter and that's what's just awesome i mean i'm super excited for this year and who the heck knows what else they got up their sleeve well i do mm-hmm. but all right ryan um you know i this is this is gonna be fun for you and you know again we talk about you know over the last few years you know you'll take a a, a dabble on a on a turbo mm-hmm. sled but I get to ride pretty much everything at least a little bit of the season yeah right but to hear you, you know, think about a sled that is pretty special to you gives you goosebumps thinking about it. Um, and, and it was a turbo, right? Yeah, it was. It um, was well built, old Ron Burgundy. Yeah. So I, yeah. here's here's my ta- which, which here's my here's my pitch for you. Mm-hmm. My pitch for you is, um, you know, you have worked your butt off to um, to become a better rider. Um, I, I've ridden with you since 2009, Nine, yeah. 2009, yeah. right? So I have seen that that day I was I teaching you that, how right? to downhill turn, downhill yeah. power turn and come back up, yeah. right? Couldn't and, do it. And, and yeah, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you know, now you obviously have helped out many years here at BBA as a guide and, and, and you do that. So, but my, my point of that is, you know, you – have seen all kinds of riders your skill set has been from point a to point b mm-hmm. and you know kyle and i's aggression is different than and our want in the train and everything is different than yours and so when you get on a turbo sled i think this was i think the reason that you liked the the ron burgundy sled the the most was and this is my personal opinion is because it forced you to be more aggressive yeah, at a time when I needed it, mm-hmm. um, and we talked about this a lot during that time frame of my career. Um, you would you would push me, especially at home, where I'm in lower altitude and maybe cheat or snow, we'll call it, um, to to continue ripping the 155s, and that really did. And I never thought about it, and you just kind of kept pointing me that way, and we never really talked about it until later on. But that that is something that you you later explain. Well, that's going to make you more aggressive. Like, well, I didn't really think of that. Mm-hmm. That's true. And it would have been easier on 163. Remember when I got a 163 at Grizzly? I remember the day we were back in Narville, and you looked behind, and I was there. What are you doing here? Oh, hey. Hi. Oh, the 163 is treating you right. And I think it was the next year I had Eleanor the Turbo, which was a little bit too chaotic for me. We too did rowdy. some crazy stuff with that. We did. That so was that short t- tunnel, a little bit of chaos profile. It was getting us to where the axis was, right? Yeah. I wasn't ready for it as a rider. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was wild. Yeah. There's no one that wouldn't have said that. Sayan said it. Rhino said it. Cool sled. But then the next year was Ron Burgundy, and or soon after anyways. And something about that, to your point, it did have just like the perfect balance of power. It didn't feel heavy. The way it was set up with the suspension, the shocks, and the skins front end and all that, that, that one really just stood out for me. And there were just days where trying to follow you guys, trying to follow, I have days and and filming with Chase where we just like, we got into stuff that I normally wouldn't have. And it goes back to what we talked about a few minutes ago where 
it can get you into trouble, but it can also get you out of trouble. Yeah. And if you know how to manage that, kind of what these guys were talking about a little earlier, the turbo really is is the beast to have. But I, I will always tell people, you need to be ready for that turbo. It's not just jump on it and like yeah. you're going to pull lines successfully all the time. You can, you just need to get there and you have to be reactive and um, to to what that machine's proactive to what that machine's going to do. Um, it's just way different. But yeah, for me, Ron Burgundy really, it's just the memories are there for getting into some crazy stuff that I never had been able to do. Yeah. But I guess, you know, where this conversation kind of goes for me also is that um, I do have the love for turbos and there's nothing more fun, like you guys said, than getting on the right day on a turbo and just utilizing that power and the aggression um, to get into places you wouldn't. But for me overall, and continuing my pace of progression, which is a lot different than your guys's, and we've talked about this before, I was born with my left leg that's underdeveloped, so I have to work through that. And so I can feel immediately the weight differences. Mm -hmm. So like a twin sled like Austin Powers and Shelby last year, you know, a 900 versus a, a twin sled, um, that kind of is my sweet spot. I love the power increase and continuing with the light feel and it gets me it gets me to be more aggressive i look back at my footage a lot like these guys do i think and i didn't have much last year if any but the year before i just it's funny that the, the twins like it helps you be aggressive because it sounds so damn good <laughs> and and this is something chris has helped me a with lot. a lot is and i remember our first ride last year on just a stock sled i came into that gnarly hill where bubble was filming and i was just like Meh. And I did fine, and I just kind of re-entried on myself. And it could have been better, but yeah. you're like, you have to be aggressive going in. And so for me, that that type of a sled, where you know, SLP heads and a twin pipe or a 900, it, I'm able to be faster, I think, mm -hmm. without being out of control. I haven't managed that power as well on a turbo. But, you know, so that's kind of my spin on it. And, um yeah, there's going to be a lot of people having a lot of fun this year on boost, but uh, <laughs> yeah. there's also going to be a lot of learning. Yeah, and and that uh, brings me to the next point uh, for the conversation is, you know, I, we know a lot of people have been waiting for this opportunity to buy a factory boost mm -hmm. sled. This they've never even ridden a turbo, and now they are yeah, all in, all in, all in, going in both feet, and. Um, you know, I, I think it will be interesting. I think there, obviously, there was, you know, the sled sold out in about four minutes mm -hmm. um, because, you know, there's, we've, we've just been wanting this. And I think that's great. And I think what we're going to see, I think we're going to see a lot of people who um, really enjoy the turbo and having that turbo every day. And then I think we're going to have some guys that said, man, that was a lot of sled. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to go back to a, an NA, mm -hmm. um, potentially. Um, Kyle, you did, mm -hmm. right? Um, you went there, had some fun on it, and said, man, maybe maybe I'll go back. Why and not a ride? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's – so to sure. my to my point and why you said that is, you know, we get the phone calls all the time. I'm, I'm wanting to, to build a sled at BBA, which can you believe we get to do that, dude? <laughs> pretty humbling mm -hmm. right um and i'm i i don't know if i want to build a 900 or you know i don't know if i want to build a naturally aspirated sled or a turbo and so you know really and 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 here's the one and i've only been riding for a couple years i've heard that and now we've se both seen guys through all the people that come to bba we've seen guys who have only ridden a couple years like really f be able to to focus um all their efforts and gain on a stock sled. But then we've seen those dudes two years in, they didn't know anything different. And so they learned the wrong foot forward counter steer right away and they picked it up. And, you know, those are the guys like that, that can, like if you just go throw them on a freaking turbo sled and I mean, they're going to wreck about everything, <laughs> but the learning curve <laughs> is quicker. And when the learning curve is quicker, as long as you're ready for that, you, I mean, you are forced to look farther ahead on a turbo without question. If you don't, mm -hmm. you might as well. You're upside uh, down. You're, you're, you're upside down, and your buddies on the stock sleds are going by <laughs> you. Going by, yeah. you. Yeah. going by you. I mean, yep. we, we've seen it 
countless times. Yep. We've done it to guys on turbos countless of times as we go by on a stalker. Like, dude, what? You're you're a rodeo right now, and I'm just like putting around mm-hmm. up here, right? But you know, and and that's I think what's we're gonna see a lot this year is guys having a lot of fun. The learning curve is going to be steep. All you guys who bought 55 <laughs> Chaos Patriot boosts, you call me when you're ready to put that 165 on there. Yeah. <laughs> we got parts in stock. Um, but, you know, like I, I joke about that because, you know, I that sled isn't for me. Um, it's fun to make things happen in a meadow. Or, or How about that first night? <laughs> so I had... I still have. I don't know if I got nightmares of that for some. I still need the, to post that clip. I'll post end, that clip. <laughs> what end of the stick I got? But I was riding in January. I was riding a 155 chaos boost, and I was a mess. Like trying to come up. I lines. thought you just sucked, and then I wrote it. <laughs> I and then I thought lines, I sucked. <laughs> flipping over backwards, spinning in circles. I mean, it was fun. But well, when we your buddies in- are going to the top, it's not very fun when you're sitting there spinning <laughs> circles in the bottom, and. Finally, after dark is when Chris is like, oh, we can switch sleds. <laughs> well, that was dumb. For one, I was tired. For two, I couldn't see anything. And then here's Kyle at the top waiting for me. And I'm like, well, this is dumb. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had some fun times. We did have some fun. And, yeah. and again, you know, guys are going to have a blast on that sled. Um, you know, for me, I'm a, I'm a pro guy. I've been very... Uh, active in that um i think you know there's a ton of conditions and terrain and and all that stuff that lend um lend the cards to being a chaos person uh whether you know it's a 55 or 65 or hell i'm building a 146 chaos this year just for some fun uh just to do some of those things some chaos things right um so but but to my point you know i think we're gonna have this this broad spectrum of riders there's, and there's so many choices of sled yeah there is it's um and, and you know mm-hmm. within the boost it's kind of simple you either get a 155 rowdy chaos or you get a 165 you know pro that's ready to go do some stuff dominate mm-hmm. the world and i think that like what you said that totally depends on your agenda as a rider yeah. i don't pull up to a hill really without the thought of trying to go to the top of it i don't look at a hill and wonder how many times i can spin in a circle on it yeah i want to go to the top yeah mm-hmm Yep. And that's the way I am as a writer. And I know a lot of, I mean, it depends on who you are. Yeah. yeah. Your agenda. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, let's talk about, um, so I think, I mean, I think that, that covers overall. I mean, I, you know, my, t- my take is um, I think the, the balance of the power and the response and the pump gas and the, you know, just the runnability of the sled that, trumps everything for me that i've ridden in the past now you go watch any video from any of my lightweight rotating freaking short tunnel whatever sleds on fire you know Mm. like well i'm gonna still build that with a matrix right Mm. um but you know this is like what we've all been waiting for this is what we want and and um you know and then that goes to you Kyle um the reason you kind of got off the turbo train was for all those exact reasons right mm-hmm. it's 70 bucks a time to go ride it's um you know really having to plan ahead because the bottom end isn't where you want it to be it's having those days when the snow wasn't what you needed it to be it just wasn't fun mm-hmm. yeah i mean i'm extremely picky on my snowmobile like i mean you wouldn't think it's, by looking at it from the outside. I know, you wouldn't, but I mean. <laughs> but I agree with your statement. I spend enough time on it that, I mean, I have, I know exactly what to expect. I know exactly what's going to happen. I want my RPMs to be right. I want my steering to be right. I want, like, all of that stuff, I just i am not willing to sacrifice anything, any sort of bog or stutter or anything. And that I found best luck on either a 900 or a stock sled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Without an absolute... I mean, there's just so much testing that used to go into, like, dialing in a turbo. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. That's we're still really good trying stuff, but, like, there was so much time just wrapped around trying to get that sled to run perfect and yeah. just kind of chasing your tail a little bit. And, I mean, for 99% of people, they were 100% stoked and happy with it, and yeah. I just... Well, and I think that probably, ha- that was the reason, like literally it took you 45 seconds to have the biggest grin of your life on your sled because we we joke about that. But in when we ride a sled, literally from the trailer into our shop, mm-hmm. 
you know if if we're bitching or yep. saying this sled is actually <laughs> we okay. We should record that sometime. The way we when people pull their sleds in, dude. I'm how not each one of us walk around oh it and God. just dude, pick I'm, it apart. Literally, <laughs> dude. Here's what we do. Here's what we do. This is awesome. We so because we have a client no loading rule, right? <laughs> um, just because we've seen some really really silly stuff. So so, but the but the Bubba? funnier thing is. <laughs> <laughs> including from Kyle. <laughs> but the funnier thing is, so we, th- and this is the look we're always looking for, you know, so I'm in, I'm in the shop. I'm talking to the guy who's just dropping off his sled and I'm just waiting for it. I'm like, Hey Kyle, can you go and load a sled and bring it in? And you come off the trailer ramp and you get to the green carpet and the head, <laughs> your arms already up in the air, right? Like, the throttle free play is so loose, you almost go over the bars. <laughs> a ski rubber sticking out of the snow. <laughs> the belt deflection is so terrible that it's like lurching, yeah. right? Yeah. There's, there's a four a, inch riser. There's a bent A arm. <laughs> I mean, all of this stuff, literally, he just picked up in four feet. Yeah, the track almost ratchets on the carpet. <laughs> Um, so my point to that was you got on a sled that you had never been on, had all of these very high expectations, mm-hmm. right? And you came back pretty est- ecstatic. Well, yeah. I mean, I was like, I don't know, I guess like looking back at it, I was like, how do I compare this to a sled that was like, I mean, a full on mod, like top to bottom, like, and you're running race gas and an intercooler and all these aftermarket parts and clutching and all this stuff, gear downs. And I mean, all that stuff. And I got on a snowmobile that like does all that for you that you bought <laughs> you know what i mean like i get on this like i wasn't before going into it i never even like put the two by each other i'm like well i just hope it like runs really good and maybe we'll have to put a tune in it or something to build power but it builds power yeah and it runs really good yeah the bottom end was really impressive for me too because i mean i had heard a lot of talk about the new the new clutch and like how all that was going to work and i just would have never thought it would have been that good yeah it's it's With legit the, and i mean there's going to be for elevation guys, there's still going to be a little bit of tweaking. We got some stuff. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So I have a question. Since you guys have had a lot of time on the chassis, I've had a little bit of time, but for you guys, each of you, setting boost and, and ASI, just the new chassis, mm-hmm. what do you think is the biggest improvement over an axis? That, the, I mean, it's... People think a tunnel, a short tunnel, is the only way... Wait, hold on. Here's what we should have done. We should have wrote this down... And we should have revealed it because you you just stole my line. So now I got nothing to say. <laughs> but go, go well, ahead. Well, like people have always just thought they watch these guys that do hopovers and re-entries and all this stuff. It's because they have a short tunnel. So everybody like aims to focus. The only way we're going to do hopovers and re-entries and the only benefit to a short tunnel is being able to do these things. Mm-hmm. Where that tunnel is way, plays a way bigger role in the way that snowmobile I mean, gets out of a hole, the way it side hills, the way it turns around downhill, how tight you can turn that sled around downhill because you don't have that back corner of the tunnel hanging up. I mean, there's there's a lot, a lot of benefits to that short tunnel. It's weird that we've been doing short tunnel on sleds for a while. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, Kyle, I agree. And, and the coolest thing, uh, great question, Ryan. The coolest thing, in my opinion, um, not only that it's a short tunnel, but the way they did the short tunnel. Yeah, that, the, the tapering. The, 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 the taper, the bumper, the cooler, the, I mean, everything is out of the snow and it literally, like, it's it's interesting that the Matrix actually gained a little weight over the axis. Mm-hmm. Now, from my standpoint, you know, I, that's what I'm working towards is to, to work on that, but when we when we ride them if you mm-hmm. take a stock axis and a stock matrix the matrix will make it look silly in the snow mm-hmm. without question mm-hmm. for for all of, and and we're talking about basically because of the tunnel yep. <laughs> i mean yeah there's 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 other things for sure um you know i i but i think you know that that tunnel and just the way it does its deal yep. it's pretty awesome another big part for me too is just probably where like <clears throat> the things that you interfere with as a rider being like the console where your knees hit. I mean, it's a narrower console. It's, I almost feel like it's maybe tilted a little bit further forward. There's more room to work there. And big thing 
for short-legged guys like me, like a whopping five nine, <laughs> is the the lower seat and the narrower seat allows me to mm-hmm. move a lot more in the neutral position. Yeah, well, I I agree. I think from an ergonomic standpoint, I think they they definitely improve that. Um, the adjustable foot stirrups. I know a lot of guys were were wanting that over the axis. Um, you know, the new seven S gauge. It's got a lot of features that um, a lot of people have been asking for. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, again, we have such such a cool platform to to start from, and you know, and 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 I think. You know, and this is we spent the the first thirty minutes talking about the boost sled and how badass it is, but really, I mean, the stock sled is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I this is unreal. Yep, like it works. I, yeah, and you know, I went out last Sunday and I was on a stock sled that we and we, again we call a stock sled something that is clutched and that we you know. I had a I had a Diamond S silencer on it, and that was that was actually literally it. I mean, mm-hmm. and you know, it was just what it would do in that terrain that you know I used to think only my lightweight sleds or turbos could go do. Like it literally is just buzzing around, cruising around, doing it with ease. I was trying to find. I did this particular line, and Kyle, I've we've been upside down in in all these <laughs> right, lines you together. Me it. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I. The last time I had done that particular line, I was on Jenny Craig, and I was like, I cannot believe I pulled that line. Mm-hmm. That was a 355-pound, you know, monster of a snowmobile, and I went and did it on a thing that had a silencer and a clutch kit, <laughs> <laughs> with and, like, pretty easy, mm-hmm. you know? And so, you know, for... I, I know it's like man everyone wanted a boost sled and guys were actually bummed well i could only get the the, the standard 850 i'm like perfect <laughs> don't be yeah. bummed yeah, dude just bummed. you should high five yourself when yeah, you're going right. by some of those turbo guys <laughs> upside down yeah mm-hmm. yeah mousetrap <laughs> yeah um well um you know i think you know this conversation uh that's what's fun about these podcasts this conversation will lead into um the next conversation um you know and and i guess you know what comes out of this for me is um you know literally and everybody be and i was gonna say it right after so you stated like we could get turboed sleds of the past to run Mm -hmm. but it took the kitchen sink and time and all of this stuff. So Mm -hmm. it's funny. It's interesting. You know, all we've been doing is getting phone calls and emails and messages of what do I need to do to my boost sled? Ride it. (laughs) Freaking ride it. (laughs) Right. Like what do I need to clutch it? I'm like, it's pretty decent. If you're high elevation, I got a little tweak here, but it's pretty decent. Like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to make it better. Mm -hmm. Like I uh, like, but seriously, like it is really good. Well, well, what about this and this and this? Well, yeah, okay, maybe, but like... Focus on your skills. The sled is really good. And so, you know, my 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 first upgrades are going to be... I'm a suspension guy. I know you guys get tired of me talking about it, but um, I don't want a suspension that is set for everybody. I want a suspension that is set for the type of riding that I like to do. And that's what our suspension does. So I'm going to do some suspension um you know i do like tweaking of the clutching and stuff i think the stock clutching is going to be pretty good for that six to eight that that mid elevation that a lot of people ride um you know for our high elevation stuff we'll be working on some stuff there um and then i'm going to focus on making the sled easier to ride and more comfortable right uh you know uh we Kyle, we found that we really liked the four inch bars on the Matrix chassis. And that was weird because I remember riding a five inch sled, which is our low bar on our axis, and it is the low bar on that sled. And I rode it the first day, and I was like, "Man, those bars feel tall." So I measured off the foot stirrup to the handlebar. Like it's the same height, but it feels higher just with the way the chassis is and the seat. And I think where your knees are, and it it definitely feels higher. Yeah. So to clarify that. Um, Kyle measured so uh, a matrix with five inch bars and an axis with five inch bars, and it was identical. Yep. Yep. And so, and what's the reason why we feel like that is a little bit of the weight that the matrix gained is high. 
It's, um, mm-hmm. you know, we have this super cool gauge and this cool um, heated storage compartment, um, which is awesome. But there was a little bit of sacrifice there. And so, um, you know, many people aren't going to notice that. It's something that we noticed, um, mm-hmm. especially for when we get into the more technical terrain. And so, you know, again, when I tell you what I'm going to be focusing on, you know, it's I obviously like making sleds lighter. And so, you know, we're working on the, the, uh, the helium hood through skins to not only lose some weight, but get some of that weight a little bit lower um the ergonomics of you know handlebars heated brake lever and then you know we carry more stuff than we need so we got to have you know good solution storage or storage solutions so you know the handlebar bag that we run um and then the new uh flex tunnel bag from polaris is really bitching so i'm pretty excited about that but you know just making the sled um handle and ride better and then just hold on to the dang thing Mm -hmm. so i agree but anyway uh we'll be talking about more goodies and stuff for that and then um you know we'll i think a future podcast obviously lends itself to you know talking about the guys that um aren't running boost sleds and aren't running turbos and and um you know all of the fun stuff and you know that's where i'm yeah i'm I'm really excited for that. I we've got some pretty pretty fun things coming down the line for um, for naturally aspirated stuff. Uh, you guys, it's uh, very. We're not going to take a nap. We don't. We're not. I like that. We're not going to take a nap. We're uh, we're going to keep riding nine hundred. We're going to keep running carbon. And we're going to keep like trying things and having fun because that's what we love to do. But we're going to ride stock sleds a lot too because we end up doing that a lot too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed our first podcast back for the 2022 season. Um, We will be definitely on a more regular schedule this season. Um, We'll be shooting for once a week. Um, Don't quote me on that. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. Once a month, I mean. Um, Set the expectations low. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But um, we we just... Love you guys listening. Love all the positive comments and feedback that we get. Love that you guys have missed it. Um, and um, we just make sure you keep uh, sharing and telling your buddies and uh, uh, drop us a line and let us know what uh, what we can help with. The guy who said that we're stealing everybody's ideas so they're not ours. Um, well, we Kyle, you said it the best. We're doing it for you. Yeah, we're actually trying to do these podcasts for you. These guys definitely don't need to hear me talk more. I already yell enough during the day. So, um, yeah, we uh, we love you guys, and we'll uh, this is going to be a great season and have a lot of fun. So, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you, um, again, you can tell all your friends. We'll be on Apple and Spotify and YouTube and Y'all subscribe to the YouTube channel, please. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, Blake's been kicking butt. We got a ton, ton of product review, product install, and just, um, you know, we really want, that's the whole reason we're doing this. We're doing this to keep you guys informed um, so you can have the best experience possible out on the snow, and that's uh, that's our goal for you guys this year with podcast, YouTube, social, and uh, all the support that we offer here at BBA. So thanks a lot.